This video is going to be part two of the tiny home design utilizing Revit 2025. And again, this video is being served as a tutorial for learning Revit as we first get started in civil engineering and architecture. One of the things that we'll take a look at is probably uh, we left off here on the view tab and changing into the 3D view. The one thing that I want to also show you is that I'm going to go ahead and change the canvas theme just so that way we can have a light screen here and you'll be able to see some of the colors and things kind of change. We'll flip back and forth that way you can see the effects. And the biggest thing we want to do here is as we're kind of navigating about the screen, I use the mouse quite a bit and this is one of the things that's kind of helpful. Number one, you have a view cube. So the view cube is very similar to some of the Autodesk products that it gets utilized. If I select any face on the view cube, it will turn it to uh, the front, to the right, to the top. And if I click the home button on the view cube, it will actually turn and reposition as we need. A few things is that if I zoom, whenever I roll my scroll wheel, so it zooms to wherever my cursor is. So if I move my cursor to that position, that's where it's going to zoom to. If I press straight down on my scroll wheel, you'll hear a click sound and I can move my mouse around to pan to be able to do some of that. All right. And usually when I, if I hold my shift key and I can actually rotate around by holding the shift key and clicking that mouse wheel and rotating around, you're going to see those levels are going to show up and you're going to be able to see what heights those are set at. So I'm going to go ahead and return back to the home position. And one of the things we're going to do now, after we've kind of just had a little bit of time to look at navigation, how to kind of move about the screen and everything, so we're going to change the wall heights. One option you can do is if you select a wall, you're going to notice in the 3D view you have a little arrow here that you can pull. And so I, I'm actually pressing and holding my left mouse button and dragging this wall height to what I want. Now, the one thing I want to draw your attention to is the properties palette. Notice how over here it'll tell you what location line we drew this wall at by the center line, what is the base constraint, so it's on the floor level, 0, 1 floor level. It doesn't have an offset, so it's right on, on that level. And then you'll see some stuff that's grayed out. And then you'll see the top constraint, it says unconnected. And when I drug the line, now we're at 11 feet, 3 and 1 seconds inches. So if I go over here and I drag this up a little bit more, you're going to see that height's going to change. And so without, it, without that unconnected height, you'll see how that works. Now on this other wall, I can select it. And if I want to click inside of this box, I do need to leave my cursor inside the box. Otherwise, it'll kind of get rid of that. But I'm just going to type 9. And then I can go ahead and select the Apply button. And you're going to see that this wall now is right at 9 feet, which is what I would like to have. If I select this one and drag down, you'll actually see that my cursor kind of snaps to the height of the other wall, and you can verify that it's 9 foot as well. My favorite method actually is going along and doing this. So I can actually select multiple walls by holding control or any other item. So if I hold control on my keyboard, and you'll see a little plus sign comes up by my cursor there, I can select multiple walls. And what I like to do is in this top constraint, section where it says unconnected, I click inside of there and I can actually say, hey, let's constrain that to the O2 level, the roof level and select apply. So that way, if I make a change to my roof level, so let's say if I want to go over here and if I click on that, uh, that number and change this to, let's say 10 foot, you're going to see now that those two walls had to change up to 10 feet and these other two have not. So if you make any level changes, those are already constrained. So the way we can also make that happen, so I'm going to go ahead and select these other two walls. I'm going to go ahead and change their top constraint to be with the roof. Notice how they're going to automatically adjust. And I'm going to go ahead and set that roof level back to 9 feet. So that's one way to create uh, some different changes in your wall heights and the different methods that you can do. I'm actually going to move back over to the O1 floor plan and either one of two ways I can double click on it here or I could also move to the tab up at the top of my screen. So notice how each view that I've opened up stays right up here. So if I go to the 3D view I can click here. If I want to go to that east elevation I can go there 
where I can go back to the floor plan. If I don't see any of those tabs up here, I can always go down here to the project browser to open that up as well. I'm going to go ahead and go to move to the architecture tab and select it. And what we're going to add in next, and I'm going to zoom in here for my building structure, is I'm going to go ahead and add a floor. So notice how floor is one of the options. If I happen to click the drop down menu, we're going to go with an architectural floor. And even that's the top portion or the default setting for this particular command. So I'm going to go ahead and select floor. What we can do here is we can either, by default, this icon is called pick walls, it is going to be highlighted. And even down here in your, in your tooltips, in your status bar, it says pick walls to create lines. So I'm actually going to go over here and select each one of the walls. You'll notice you'll have purple lines that will show up. And sometimes if you have wall lines that go to the inside, we actually want them to go to the outside. And I'm just going to go around and I'm going to select all four walls. And you're going to see the very outside edge of that floor. That's what we're actually selecting. We're using the walls to pick the boundaries of our floor. And I'm going to go ahead and select the green check mark. And what's going to happen here is if I go back to that 3D view, you're going to see it puts a floor right underneath the walls that we just created. And that's kind of the process that we're going to go along with kind of creating our floor for our kind of our tiny home. All right, so we're going to cover how to change some different uh, types of floors and things later. But probably the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add a gable roof because it's a very similar process. I'm actually going to go ahead and move to the 01 floor plan. And what's going to happen here, I'm going to do this on purpose, is we're going to go up here to the roof. And we want to choose roof by footprint, which is the default. Or if you click the drop down, you're going to see roof by footprint. You're going to see it's going to kind of have a lot of the same options. It's going to say to pick walls to create the lines for the boundaries of the roof. A few things we're going to have is in the menu here, we're going to have define slope checked. And we're going to have an overhang set to one foot. And if it doesn't say that, we need to go ahead and change that. So if yours says something different, go ahead and change that to one foot on the overhang. And what we're going to do is the define slope being checked means I want to pick the walls that are going to have the sloping edges of the roof. So in this case, I want to select this one. And you're going to see that purple line is going to get thrown all the way out here because it's got that one foot offset or overhang. I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to select the other one. And you're going to notice it's going to have a little triangle icon on both of these. And it has a pitch of 9, nine to 12. And we'll kind of be able to play around with that a little bit. In order to get the other two, we want to create a gable roof. So I'm going to uncheck define slope and I'm going to select this wall and I'm going to select this wall. Notice how it creates a com complete closed loop profile. Once I have that finished I can go ahead and select the green check mark and right now here's the only bad thing that happens. If I go into my 3D view because I was on level one it put it down on level one. So I'm going to go ahead and select my roof and over here in my properties palette I actually want to change this to the roof level and select apply and notice how it adjusted and placed that onto the roof level so again if you take a look at it from the front you can see the base of the roof was based on and built off of that roof level set at nine foot so let's go ahead and I'm gonna put this into the home view here one of the things that we can do is we can kinda of start to take a look at making some changes visually so down here in my my uh, my uh, visual kind of toolbar here, we're going to see that I can change like the level of detail. But this little cube here says we can go to shaded. We can create realistic. So let's go ahead and let's choose shaded. So this is going to be shaded shaded there, so you can kind of see a little bit of what it looks like. You can also go into realistic, which realistic is just going to be kind of gray right now because all the materials just set to generic. But let's go ahead and change that to shaded. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here to the view tab. And let's change the canvas theme. So the canvas theme, you can definitely tell the shaded option kind of keeps the same colors, but it kind of starts to blend in with the background a little bit. So I'm actually going to turn that back on to the light canvas theme. And what we're going to take a look at here is, number one, we've got a gap here. 
between our wall and our roof. And so what we're going to end up doing here is I'm going to actually, I'm going to select all four walls. Now a little neat trick is I'm going to select the front wall. I'm going to press and release the tab key. And notice how it's highlighted all the other ones. And then I'm going to click with my mouse. So that way it selects all four walls. I'm going to repeat that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this wall. So it's a click and release. Press and release on the tab key. Notice how all of them will highlight and I click one more time. So again, I didn't move my mouse and I kept it right there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to select this option up here called attach top to base, which means I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then my next thing is going to be that I have to select the roof. And you're going to notice when I click off of this now, now all the walls are going to extend up to the roof that we have set. All right, a few things for changes. Number one, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few different features. Let's go ahead and start with the roof since we were just working with it. Let's go ahead and select it. And over here in your properties palette, you have something called the type selector. So we can change what type of roof that we have here. So right now that it's set by generic 12 inch, that means generic is just kind of like a random material that doesn't exist. And it's a 12 inch thick roof. I'm actually going to go down here to wood rafter, 8 inch asphalt shingle. So this has got some more defined materials and thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You're going to see the roof got thinner. And if I click off of it, you can see it kind of changed in appearance. Now what I'm going to do is also change my appearance from shaded to realistic. And if you notice when I go to realistic, you can actually see a, sh a shingle pattern that shows up. So that's what one of the benefits of being able to change some of our of our different materials. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the floor. So the floor is this portion down here. Rather than floor generic 12 inch, we can choose wood joist 10 inch wood finish. And you can't really tell a lot of difference, but here's what I'm going to have you do. Go ahead and select your roof. And we're going to use this little pair of eyeglasses down here called the temporary hide isolate. And we're going to select hide element. When you do that, the outside of your screen is going to get highlighted in a teal color. And what I can do is I can rotate down and see here is the, what the flooring looks like when it's, when it's being changed over to this new type. If I select the floor and then choose, hey, let's go back to that generic 12 inch, you can see it just goes back to the gray. So depending upon what kind of, of selection you make will depend upon what kind of one that you want kind of appearance that you'll have so and you'll see it actually looks like hardwood floor that's been put into this to this tiny home I'm gonna go ahead and rotate up I'm gonna go ahead and click on my eyeglasses once more and say reset temporary hide and isolate and that'll bring that back so I'm gonna go ahead and select my front wall here as well on the basic wall I'm gonna go ahead and choose I'm gonna scroll up because this one here has a little scroll bar that you can kind of take a look at and what we're looking for is an exterior brick on wood stud. And I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Now, you're going to notice something kind of funny happens. It's like, wait a minute, we selected brick. So if I go back into my floor plan, and if I select this front wall, you're going to see that we have two arrows that are on the inside. Well, that's actually the wall orientation, which means the brick is actually on the inside of our building. So to show you what that looks like, I'll go back to the 3D view. And let's go ahead and temporarily hide that roof for us like we did before. And you're going to see here's what the brick pattern looks like on the inside. It's a really easy fix. If you're on that floor plan, you can just click on those double arrows. If I select the wall and just press the space bar, that will also create that. Now the thickness of this wall is messing with the boundary of the floor that we originally set and we can always go back and make some changes. For now, we're gonna leave it set like that. But for right now, here's what we're gonna take a look at. Is I'm gonna select the remaining walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold control, select my three remaining walls, and change those over to an exterior wood siding on wood stud. Okay, notice how it'll say constraints are not satisfied. That's some of the sizing and thickness of the wall. So I'll say remove constraints. And notice how, again, same kind of thing. If I select all these walls, press the space bar, 
it will now change a lot of the so there's what the siding should look like that one's changed and that one's changed so now we have drywall on the inside and we have of course our our uh, material here on the outside for the ship for the siding if I change the visual style to shaded this will be what the shaded appearance looks like so it depends on what kind of appearance you wish to see and again if I change and reset the temporary height isolate you'll see that there is what what we have going on if I go into realistic this is what it looks like so as far as that goes that's gonna go ahead and get us started so with making some modifications here's our floor plan you're gonna see we changed some of the thickness of the of the walls which messed with our footprint but that's okay we'll go ahead and make changes to that later and uh, for right now we're gonna go ahead and move back to that 3d view just so we can see that and we're gonna go ahead and end out on this video because we are getting a little bit lengthy here so we're gonna go ahead and move on to part three in the next video we'll take a look at some things like how to modify wall types as well as placing windows and doors revising some of the dimensions that we've kind of tweaked with and kind of messed with and uh, continue to learn the ins and outs of Revit.